work with a guy named Damon West. Okay. And um, Damon and Dak, they pretty cool. And um, they told me, hey, man, we're going to bring Day, uh, we're gonna bring Dak to the prisons. We want you to give him a tour. And I kind of laughed it off. I'm like, man, Dak ain't coming to no, you know, penitentiary. This is the, we talking about the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys? They like, yeah. So we get the Dak pulled up. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we going to talk. Connecting with these people as they come home and you really giving, you know what I mean, giving them a chance if they want to take it. it. There you go. You said the key word. Yeah. If they want to take it. If you want to take it. Because if you're looking for Brewster to, to turn your life around overnight, that's not what's going to happen. If you're looking for Brewster to do the work, that's not what's going to happen. But what is going to happen is Brewster going to expose to you that you can be successful at a high level. Wow. I'm going to expose that to you. I'm from the old school, man. We believe in putting in our own work. Let's talk about you taking, uh, I, I, I believe on when you took uh, little Kiki down there, it was the same prison that he had visited before he told me on here. And let me tell you, I will tell you what's crazy. This, let me show you the irony. The first time I ever visit somebody in the penitentiary in my life, scared shit out of me. You know what I'm saying? I went to, I thought they were gonna keep me in there. I've be, I been so bad all my life. I'm like, boy, what I get it, they gonna keep me from some old. <laughs> so it was going, it was the Polanski unit. Yeah. That's the first time I went and seen one of my homeboys. He got life. And um, I went and seen him. This was years, years ago. And my first time ever going back was to the same unit. Wow. With Brewster. When I, when I, when I, when I, it was the, the, the only two times I had ever been to, the, to a prison was boom. Yes. And then years later, again, and this time I was, oh, wait, let me tell you, I was in the prison and one of my homeboys that been in there about 17 years popped out of there from my neighborhood. I'm talking about went through hell, didn't care, was about to get himself in. What'd he say? We hugged for about 20 minutes. Oh, minutes. man, that's beautiful. <laughs> Boss man, Bruce is demanded here, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm alone for the ride. <laughs> Uh, so the first time that was the very first, first prison time, yeah. I done took him to several, several since then them, yeah. but the very first prison that we went to we was in the car and Key was like uh, where we going I said we gonna go to Polanski Uni man I'm gonna That's take you over here he said Polanski he said you for real I said yeah what's up he said man the first time I ever visited somebody in prison was at this uni Polanski Uni I said oh yeah I bet so when I took him in there you know as a matter of fact when he saw his partner we had pretty much wrapped up everything we was doing. Dude just walked by talking about, look how black boy. So when he turned around, you know, we was finna keep everybody walking. He was finna get your case. <laughs> he was finna go to lock up, cause he was the turn. He was on some man, I ain't going nowhere that I see little Kiki. You know what I'm saying? That's what he was on. So when we turn around, I'm like, what's up, Key? Key like, oh no. That's bro. I'm looking at Key, looking at him, man. He hugged Kiki for about 20 minutes. Damn. Man, he hugged Key, wouldn't let Key go. Because he had, cause, cause they Cause had he a real knew, connection. A yeah, that's Key partner for real. They grew right. up together. Key, you know what I'm saying? Now, I didn't know when we got to the unit, we didn't know that the dude was her. When Key saw him, it was a wrap. Key was just like, damn. They were both stuck in a, you know, in a trance looking at each other. He hugged him for a good 20 minutes, man. Wow. I just. Man, and, and and when you took him in there on the film that I seen, the 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 warden, the guards, all of them was embracing you guys in, uh -huh. a, in a way of respect, mm -hmm. you know, and and really showing that they wanted to uh, let these guys who wanted to play part in seeing you guys and coming out and, and supporting what you're doing, they really seemed like they was into it, you know. Oh man, let let me make sure we send a big big shout out to the rehabilitation program, division in the state of Texas, what they doing with the penal system is hands down unbelievable. Something that's unprecedented, something that's never taken place. Uh, yeah, we have to give them a very big shout out. They are really implementing real programs to assist individuals like myself to becoming better people. Now keep in mind, this ain't the Hilton Hotel. It is prison. So, you know, nothing is mandatory, you know. This is all about you, about self. The opportunity is there. Now, what you do with the opportunity, that's on you, bro. Wow. And and just, you got you to gotta think, man. A lot of those guys, you know, um, are lifers. A lot of them got double life sentences. Mm -hmm. uh, never come home, you know. Mm -hmm. And the only thing, the only glimmer of hope they see is in you guys when you go in there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something people don't think about a lot. You know what I mean? That some of those guys stand, you know, they, they, they may not be trying to change to come home. They just changing just because they need to change. 
Uh, and that be really my message when I'm dealing with lifers, individuals that got a significant amount of time. It's not even really about whether you are whether you free or locked up as much as it's about the man you are, mm. the man you becoming, your legacy. What if it's all said and done? What you want to leave behind? Mm. Because long as God is waking you up every day, you got the opportunity to do something great. May that be affect somebody else's life. May that be helping somebody else do something. It's a it's a opportunity you have to do something positive because if you're dead it's over with man i, I, have, I was going to ask about the dak prescott while but before you get prison. on to that well, before you get on to that I, i'm still in prison but um i read an article once and tell me if this how how can an inmate get to be able to do this if this is true because i saw it in an article and there was an inmate who um you know y'all go to school and stuff mm -hmm. get your degrees this person actually got a doctor degree as mm -hmm. in like medical doctor do they? I so, don't hear that a lot, though. Right. So, Pete, you were, some of the smartest men in the world are incarcerated. Mm -hmm. Some of the most skillful, talented individuals are incarcerated. So, him being able to d get that degree, that medical I'm, degree, yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised by that at all. I know scholars that are incarcerated. I'm talking about professional professors and. You know, some of the best hidden talent and potential we have are with men and women that are incarcerated behind the walls. Okay, but they said that he got it, but my next thought is, okay, so now when he gets out of prison, and yes, you are a um, licensed doctor, you can do surgery, whatever. Mm -hmm. How hard would it be for that um, person with that record to come out and start his own practice and actually start, you know, moving so forward? So I'm not familiar with the medical industry in that field to mm -hmm. be able to speak on it, but I would like to believe that if you are licensed and you're able to build a, a, a platform and get you some clients going, that you're good to go. It's like cutting her. Once okay. you go to, you know, getting that clientele up, you know, hey, it's up. Man, uh, so I wanted to go back to bringing, you know, you brought Kiki in, and, and you and you done some work with Dak Prescott. Yeah, Dak, that's my boy. I got major love for Dak Prescott. Big shout out to my boy Dak. Wow, like what was it like dealing with him, and how did you even connect to him to, you know, uh, re-enter the prison system? Oh, uh, so I work with a guy named Damon West. Okay, and um, Damon and Dak, they pretty cool, and um, they told me, hey man, we gonna bring Day, uh, we gonna bring Dak to the prisons. We want you to give him a tour. And I kind of laughed it off. I'm like, man, Dak ain't coming to no, you know, penitentiary. This is the, we talking about the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys? They like, yeah. So when we get the Dak pulled up. Blew my mind. Got out the car. I'm like, damn, that's Dak? I was like, I went over, hollered, what's up, bro? He was like, what's up? I'm like, man, you finna go into prison and go chill? He was like, yeah. I had a whole nother fine respect for him at that of moment. Of course. The fact that the man stopped what he was doing, man, bro, I ain't got to come away. And we ain't like in Dallas. We way in Huntsville. That's two hours away. Yeah. Bro came out there, went into the prison, toured the facility, came into the chapel. He spoke. He kicked it with the homies. I'm talking about, I messed with that. Wow. Yeah. And how did, I know they, they, they had to love that, bro. Because there's people in the oh, free world man. that's not even getting to see Dak. These niggas, these niggas right here spawned. Boy, the unit, the that unit. Point, niggas man, the unit, the unit went into an uproar. And the guards. What everybody went crazy <laughs> said, I told Dak, I said, listen, the, them, them Dallas Cowboys, man, they love the, them. It's a, that's a serious situation in the penal institution in Texas. That's real. L listen to me, in the state of Texas, in that prison system, the Dallas Cowboys, is very serious. He can get your ass whooped. Oh, it definitely you get your I, I explained that to Dak. You hear me? Yeah. He laughed. He like, you for real? Man, listen. I'm finna, we finna go in this prison. You need to understand some people might say a little something crazy or whatnot. Yeah, because yeah, they for real about them Cowboys. And, and, and the ones who ain't is for real not about them Cowboys. Yeah. You got Houston in there and, te and Dallas. That's a whole situation. Listen, man. Them Houston Texans, the Texans. and them Dallas Cowboys. That's a problem in there. That's a problem inside of our penal <laughs> institution. That's a problem. <laughs> Several Love. things will take place behind the Cowboys <laughs> in them Texas in the state of Texas, man. <laughs> <laughs> they serious about it. Do you hear me? So how long did he stay down there with you? All day or just yeah, man, half the day? He chilled about two, three hours with two us. Two or three hours. Yeah, he came down, toured the facility. He uh, Actually, he helped graduate. It's a program called The Change Agent. Wow. And he helped uh, graduate some of the guys. He was the keynote speaker. Man, Dak was very down to earth. How much do you think that changed the inmates' life that he did help, the ones that's coming home? Did you think, do you think it spilled hope on them? Um, not only do I know what he done 
you know, place, you know, hope in them guys. It's what it done for me. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? Just to be able to see, like, that's the sweets for me. People always hear me from the streets to the sweets. And, you know, when I'm saying that, they'll think that I'm talking about some money. I'm talking about experiences. You know, that was an experience for me that I'll never be able to forget. I consider that the sweets being able to rock with, you know, Dak Prescott. This is the uh, Dallas Qu Cowboys starting quarterback. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So to know that you're changing your life or put you in this kind of position, it's like, damn, I'm just doing right in. You know, doing what I'm supposed to do as a, as a man, as a better person, it'll create opportunities like this where you kicking it with people like that. Man. Where you kicking it with people like Lil' Kiki. Mm. You kicking it with Donk, Lady J, Bebe. Like, you know, to, to be, to come from sitting in a cell in your boxes to being able to go to Roof Chris with Lil' Kiki. Man, that's the sweets. That's definitely the sweets. <laughs> that's the sweets. A lot of niggas in, in the free world ain't doing that. <laughs> that's a lot the, of these free world niggas man, man, got know. clean records. They ain't got man, nothing on their record. They is not the seeing for me, man. They are not seeing baby. They are not seeing That's nothing. the sweets for me, man, being able to do things like that. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.